I'm going to talk for a few minutes about the most feared and dreaded complication of LASIK, which is post-LASIK corneal ectasia. Ectasia is a direct result of the insidious damage that LASIK does to the cornea. Let me explain. The cornea is under constant stress from pressure inside the eye, that is, intraocular pressure, pushing on the back surface of the cornea. This is perfectly normal. Without pressure inside the eye, the eyeball would collapse like a basketball without air pressure. The cornea contains collagen bands which, form its, which provide its form and biomechanical strength. You can think of these collagen bands like rubber bands stretching across the diameter of the cornea. The front or anterior portion of the cornea is significantly stronger than the posterior cornea. This is clear upon microscopic examination of the various layers of the cornea. Obviously, humans were never intended to lose the front portion of their corneas. When a LASIK flap is created, whether with a blade or a laser, the collagen bands are permanently severed. In other words, the rubber bands are cut and relaxed back, never to rejoin again. After the flap is created, a laser is used to remove corneal tissue, which destroys more of the cornea's biomechanical structure. The flap never heals and is permanently decoupled from the underlying cornea. Scar tissue forms at the flap margin to tack the flap down like a Tupperware lid which just seals a bit around the edges. The thickness of the flap adds virtually no biomechanical strength to the cornea. Because of this decoupling of the flap from the posterior cornea and ablation of corneal tissue, the biomechanical integrity of the cornea is significantly and permanently diminished after LASIK, a loss of one half of its normal strength more or less. In this weakened state, the cornea may deform like a weak spot in a tire bulges under pressure. This is called post-LASIK corneal ectasia. When this happens, the cornea steepens or bulges or protrudes. The patient starts becoming nearsighted again with astigmatism that is not correctable with glasses. By definition, the disease is progressive. Patients may face legal blindness or corneal transplant. Ectasia may develop months or years following seemingly successful LASIK. Ectasia has been estimated to occur in almost 1% of LASIK cases, but the estimate varies widely depending on who you ask. Since most cases are never reported, the true rate of this devastating complication may never be known. There are likely tens of thousands of cases of post-LASIK ectasia, many undiagnosed, in the United States alone and many more around the world. In an attempt to hide the truth about post-LASIK ectasia, LASIK surgeons may deliberately misdiagnose post-LASIK corneal ectasia as keratoconus. Keratoconus is a naturally occurring disorder of the cornea, which usually affects both eyes and typically begins during puberty or late teen years. Research has found that keratoconus is not the same histopathologic process as post-LASIK corneal ectasia. If a patient did not have keratoconus, strong family history of keratoconus, or early signs of keratoconus before LASIK, and experiences steepening of the cornea with vision loss after LASIK, then the correct diagnosis is likely post-LASIK ectasia. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration oversees medical lasers and is charged with tracking adverse events resulting from their use. The agency is fully aware of the growing epidemic of post-LASIK ectasia, yet they refuse to issue a public health alert. They refuse to add stronger cautionary language to the labeling of eczema lasers, and they refuse to take any steps to ensure that prospective patients are informed of the risk of post-LASIK ectasia and other adverse effects and consequences of LASIK. As of August 2015, when this video was recorded, the FDA is considering an application for approval of a new drug device combo called corneal collagen crosslinking to treat keratoconus and post-LASIK ectasia. Clearly, the FDA knows there's a problem, but evidence of safety and effectiveness of corneal collagen crosslinking for treating post-LASIK ectasia is extremely weak. Large diameter hard contact lenses may be a better option. 
If you suffer from post-LASIK ectasia, or so-called keratoconus after LASIK, please file an injury report with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Google File a MedWatch Report and select Consumer slash Patient Voluntary Report. If you're considering LASIK, my advice to you is to keep your glasses. The so-called hassle of glasses and contact lenses is nothing compared to living with impaired vision that cannot be corrected with glasses. The only way to prevent surgically induced ectasia is to avoid LASIK. It is important to remember that LASIK is elective surgery. There is no sound medical reason to place your eyesight at risk from unnecessary surgery.